In the jealous world of mountaineering, Don Willems was seen by many as the best. That he was less well known than Mallory, Irving or Bonington is because he never courted fame or publicity. He was a maverick, working-class son of the 50s, who trained on cigarettes, cheap booze and daily injections of Jerry Lee Lewis. 30 years hardly changed him. But by then, Willems, offhand though he was to celebrity, was an icon, a cult figure in the world of climbing. He set about climbing everything except the social ladder, which, as an apprentice Manchester plumber, he saw as a fatuous exercise for the fish. Don Willens conquered the Alps, twice tackled Everest, and was the first man to stand on the summit of Annapurna. But back on the rock faces of the Lake District in North Wales, he teamed up with a friend, also from Manchester, and together they became acknowledged by the world as the greatest climbing partnership in history. His friend's name was Joe Brown. Don, I think, was the best uh, person to climb with, you know, the situations, we used to climb, you know, all levels in the Alps and in Britain. And, you know, he was really great to climb with. But uh, sometimes, you know, we didn't get on too well in a normal sort of social situation. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, Don didn't get on too well with any of my girlfriends that, that I had, and eventually I think that is what split us up. That rift was to be healed. On a murky morning in the Lanberis Pass in Snowdonia, Willens and Brown, now with 106 years between them, are to rope up to retackle one of their early triumphs of youth, which at the time had startled the world. It was an horrendously exposed rock face which Brown himself christened Cemetery Gates. It was tragically prophetic. It was to be Willen's last major climb. A few months after this film was made, Don Willen's died, aged 52, in bed. Hi, kiddo. All right. Is that helmet to protect your head or to keep your fag dry? To keep my fag dry. <laughs> Oh, not too clever, is it? No, it's not. It could uh, could be a bit slippy up there. You not brought any gear, have you? Just a rope. You can take the waterproofs off it. Be too warm walking up yeah. there. Yeah. Looking in fine athletic trim. <laughs> Very kind of you, but uh, <laughs> hey. Very kind of you, but uh, <laughs> I don't feel in very good athletic trim. <laughs> it's a long time since we've been up here, isn't it? 33 years, mate. Well, it's 33 years since we did Cemetery Gates, but how long is it since we were last up here together? I don't know. It's that long ago. I can't remember. <coughs> <coughs> right. This particular climb that Joe and I are going to do was the climb that we did 33 years ago when I was 19. He's never done it since, he said. And I think I did it, I think I repeated it a year after, so it's 32 years. And this is gonna be really hard for me because I'm 14 stone now. I was about nine stone then. And uh, I'm no stronger than I was then. So it's gonna be an epic climb, but uh, a sort of trip up uh, a vertical memory lane which, if I'm going to do many more of them, uh, I'm going to have to fall in line with the rest of the lads, stop eating three big meals a day and drinking six pints a day, and uh, I'm going to have to get get myself into shape. But you're not going to do that, are you? I'm not going to do that, no. <laughs> Actually, when I look back, 
and way it all up. The climbing was secondary to me to actually getting out into the hills, you know, getting out into the mountains. And uh, I suppose if you live long enough, you do a full circle. And what I'm at the stage I'm at now is that uh, I'm not particularly interested in very hard rock climbs, and I'm not really interested in climbing to my absolute limit. You know, I don't want to feel that I'm being pushed. Willans never wanted to be pushed. It was thus, with something approaching malicious enjoyment, that his early contemporaries awaited his call to the colours and the taming discipline of national service. And they were all rubbing their hands with glee at me going in. Oh, you'll be in the jankers all the time, all this. Anyway, I went for the medical and uh, got my grade card. And we used to meet in the YMCA in Manchester and sort out where we we're going to go for the weekend. And uh, I walked in, showed me grade card. It said, grade three, you are not required for military service. And they're absolutely sick they were. They were sick all night. They've been having great fun at my expense. And there it was. I wasn't even going. <laughs> and it's very interesting, the reason for it, wasn't, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the reason was that I, I had been in hospital for what was diagnosed as an ulcer in my stomach because I collapsed at work and I was just being violently sick and they carted me off to the hospital I couldn't get off the floor. And actually, it was uh, vertigo. I suffer from... Uh, I didn't realise it at the time, but uh, I suffer from vertigo, which is this imbalance in your ears. And when, when the sinuses become blocked, I get a little bit of a, an upset in my balance. Don was very strong, but I know lots of strong people. And Don's success, I think, was probably like most top climbers. It was a combination of strength, flexibility, agility, and most important of all, what went on inside his head. If you haven't got it together inside your head and you know that you can stay cool and work things out in positions where you might fall off and be killed. I think possibly you fall off and get killed. The walk up's not got much easier. Are you looking forward to this, the two of you, Don, for? No, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I am. Oh, hey. <laughs> you climb all the time, yeah. I don't. What is it that makes a great team? I think it's just confidence in each other, really. Uh, you don't have to like each other. <laughs> You're not very good at uncoiling ropes, either, are you? <laughs> hey, you coiled it up in the first place. Oh, you're cocky with me, old man. <laughs> Don, how did it get its name, this climb? Well, uh, Joe came up with the name, and he saw it on a bus. Uh, you know, the uh, destination on the bus. And he said, uh, how about that for name of that climb, Cemetery Gate? So uh, that's, that's how he got the name. Not too imaginative, but uh, we're not very imaginative, are we? With that unimaginative, I'm looking for the end of this rope. It's a bit awkward just there, Don, so watch the rope fairly carefully. OK. Cos there's, there's quite a bit of wet about. Is it wet in the crack? It's it's wet in bits. You know, you can find dry spots. Better not go passing uh, runners, had I? Not good uns, no. 
good runners that are easy to take off. Yeah, I shall... I shall look after you as well as looking after me. <laughs> the rope's not coming. Are you standing on it? Yeah. Do you want me to get off it? Yes, please. You're moving a bit too fast for me. It's a bit hard on the fingers. <coughs> it's a nice crack. It was. Nice to get all the big jugs again. It's slacked on. Right. Are you going on now? Yeah. Sounds a bit doubtful, that. How are your fingers holding out? Oh, they're all right on this bit. It's just when you get onto the place where you're on the flat walls that it starts to feel it. This is a place where people used to fall off a lot, isn't it? Wow. In fact, I think this is the place just above me where Denny fell off. Oh, I. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently he fell off and then he was frightened that he might have lost his nerve. So he went up to the top and instead of fixing the ropes around a tree, he took a, a boot lace out of his boots and tied it round the tree and then put the rope through that. And then he abseiled off that to prove he hadn't lost his bottle. That's incredible, that. With only one boot on. <laughs> Are you at the bottom of the next hard move? Yeah, I'm just at what most people think of as the crux. I'll tell you whether it is in a minute. Oh, that's better. It's a, a finger strain job again. Ah, well, and thanks. Which time I get there, I'll have no fingers at all. 
I'll be climbing on my elbows. And all the foothills are wet. Oh, charming. <laughs> Next time you decide on one of these vertical trips up memory lane, pick a nice dry day. <laughs> I'll try. Are you over it? Yeah. Well done, lad. It's just a bit of a bit of drag. Are you hanging on my rope? It no. Feels like, no, it's, it's it just... It feels like 14 stone on that. No. Now you know how I feel all the time. Are you on this dance? Yeah. I shall be safe in about two minutes. You take in this three, three yard of slack. I can't take it much tighter because of the friction, Don. Oh. If you climb up, I'll take it in and then you can sag down to what you want. Right. OK. Hang on, my hearing aids come off. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's terrible getting old. <laughs> <laughs> This is the hard bit, eh? Yeah. It's... It's not so bad if you get it sorted out right. Right. Hey, wizard at mountains. Yeah? Work some magic and make me seven stone again. All right. <laughs> How's that? Takes me back 33 years, that mate. <laughs> I felt as if I'd got more than... Eh? I felt as if I'd got more than four stone then. <laughs> but I think it might be the friction on the rock causing uh, it. Actually, I was... It wasn't too bad. Most of that were friction you were pulling. You weren't much on me. Yeah. Right. So far, so good. The fellow said when he fell off the tenth floor. I think this is where I get my little come up and see you. I don't think I'm getting too old. I'm bloody sure I am. Oh, hey, it's nice to get all of that spike, mate. This game's for young lads, not old men. No, you're doing great. Whoa. Did you uh, bring a spare pair of fingers? Why? You need them. Yeah. Oh, with, it, with this nice rope above you. Above you. Hey. I say with these nice ropes up above you, and all those nice runners, they're almost within reach of each other. Are they? Is this one of yours, this little one yeah. above the overhang? Yeah. Joe turned to me one day, and I've always remembered it. He said, you'll never make 21. So I think I was about 18 then, and I, I puzzled on that remark because he must have thought that I was very necky. In actual fact, I wasn't really. You know, when I think the danger level has risen to a certain point, then I think that uh, I've still got enough uh, strength and reserve to get myself out of it. 
I never like to feel that I've actually burnt my boats. Not like a, a lot of lads do. Fair play to them, they bowl, but <laughs> I like to come back, because if you don't come back, it's end of story, isn't it? That's it. Get a big knee jammed in. Fourteen stone, a fighting flab here. Right. Uh, strenuous, mate. I keep thinking uh, I'll make a move and get a rest. I know the next moves are hard. I'm afraid my uh, footwork leaves a lot to be desired. This is the hard bit, is it? Yeah, it is. Well, it is a bit higher up. Although, I, I don't think it's any harder than some of the bits down below. No. <laughs> At least by the time you get here, you've had a bit of practice. Aye, by the time I get there, I'll just slack off a second, Joe. Just pull in the... Uh, that's better. Uh, oh, you've got... You've got a few runners in here, haven't you? Yeah. Well, with that, there's some wet streaks there, and you're actually standing on wet holes. I don't know if it's still wet now, but uh, I thought it was a good place to make it secure. Yeah. But in fact, the, the handles are not bad. Oh. Right, I see what you mean. It's getting a bit, getting a bit naughty again. The jugs are disappearing. No, there's one there that's so big, it's, it's like a font full of water. Ah. Right, give it some stick. See these grimaces? <laughs> oh. Get on. your feet up. Stop stretching. Get your feet I'm up. I'm telling you, you don't... You might help by telling where bloody handles are. Huh? <clears throat> Piece of dough. Piece of dough. Will that bloody thing fall up off under 14 stone? I don't think so. And I'm going to yes. sit on the bugger. Still got you anyway. Oh, oh that uh, training I've been doing. In the pub? In the pub and cruising in the Caribbean. I don't seem to have done much for my climbing style. It's only my hands gone, my feet are quite strong. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hey, is this... Uh, is this a non-smoking stance? No, not right in this place, yeah. Have you enjoyed yourself, Don, up to, to now? boost my courage. Me? Yeah. Don? Uh, yeah. Aye, in a sort of twisted sort of way, aye. I think I did it... If I did it once or twice more, I might get to like it again. <laughs> well, there's slight problems at the moment with the water. Very wet. Yeah. <clears throat> it looks pretty bloody grueling. <laughs> well, <clears throat> give us the old seven stone tightener. You know, what about me? Are you only weigh bloody seven stone? Ten and a half at the moment, which is, which is too heavy for me. Ten and a half? Yep. <laughs> I 
I think if you share a lot of hardship and danger together, I don't think this is just in climbing. I would think that people in war situations possibly do the same thing. You just get a feeling for each other, which is probably stronger than a normal bond of friendship. Right, I'm on the top now, Don. You can give me all the slack. Well done. Okay, Don. <coughs> Take it. Take it in. Still steep, isn't it? Hey. It's still steep. It is steep, but it's getting a bit more juggy there. Or are you at the place where there aren't any? Hey? Or are you at the place where it isn't so juggy? Yes, I think I've arrived. At another crunch bit here. Yeah. How am I doing? OK, come on, Don. You're doing fine. <clears throat> oh, that's a welcome sight, that top jug. Yeah. <laughs> Don? Yeah? Can you remember? What about? Well, that was the place my most vivid memory of this climb was arriving at that point and shouting to you that we'd cracked it and you let out this terrific whoop of delight. Did I? Which I've never heard you do since and i never heard you do it before. Which was perhaps an indication of how exciting this climb was when we first did it. Yeah. Yeah, funny enough, I, I don't remember that. But... Uh, I might let one out now. Yahoo! <laughs> I'm sure I found it. Found it much harder today than I did then. Yeah. Okay, Don. Uh. Well done, lad. <laughs> well. Made it. <laughs> Had me doubts once or twice. Ah, oh, I knew you'd get up it. A little, uh, little pull, you know, to get me back to nine and a half stone every now and again. Work wonders. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I certainly frightened myself. So, what's the crack now? Well, just uh, like the old time, just coil the ropes and scramble off. Or abseil, whichever you want. Abseil down the corner? Yeah, OK. We'll For old time's sake. Don is a cult figure in climbing. I can't think of any others. In the past, you know, Mallory, Irving, Wimper, people like that are not in the same category as Don. Don is unique. Looking in fine athletic trim. <laughs> very kind of you, but... Uh, <laughs> hey? Very kind of you, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't feel in very good athletic trim. <laughs> <coughs> it's a long time since we've been up here, isn't it? 33 years, mate. Well, it's 33 years since we did Cemetery Gates, but how long is it since we were last up here together? I don't know. It's that long ago. I can't remember. <coughs> 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 
<laughs> right. This particular climb that Joe and I are going to do was a climb that we did 33 years ago when I was 19. He's never done it since, he said. In the jealous world of mountaineering, Don Willems was seen by many as the best. That he was less well known than Mallory, Irving or Bonington is because he never courted fame or publicity. He was a maverick, working class son of the 50s who trained on cigarettes, cheap booze and daily injections of Jerry Lee Lewis. 30 years hardly changed him. But by then, Willems, offhand though he was to celebrity, was an icon a cult figure in the world of climbing. He set about climbing everything except the social ladder, which, as an apprentice Manchester plumber, he saw as a fatuous exercise for the fish. Don Willens conquered the Alps, twice tackled Everest, and was the first man to stand on the summit of Annapurna. But back on the rock faces of the Lake District in North Wales, he teamed up with... And I think I did it, I think I repeated it a year after, so... It's 32 years, and this is going to be really hard for me because I'm 14 stone now. I was about 9 stone then, and uh, I'm no stronger than I was then. So it's going to be an epic climb, but uh, a sort of trip up uh, a vertical memory lane, which if I'm going to do many more of them, uh, I'm going to have to fall in line with the rest of the lads, stop eating three big meals a day and drinking six pints a day. And uh, I'm going to have to get get myself into shape. But you're not going to do that, are you? I'm not going to do that, no. <laughs> Actually, when I look back and weigh it all up, the climbing was secondary to me to actually getting out into the hills you know, getting out into the mountains. To rope up, to retackle one of their early triumphs of youth, which at the time had startled the world. It was an horrendously exposed rock face which Brown himself christened Cemetery Gates. It was tragically prophetic. It was to be Willans' last major climb. A few months after this film was made, Don Willans died, aged 52, in bed. Hi, kiddo. All right. Is that helmet to protect your head or to keep your fag dry? To keep my fag dry. <laughs> oh. Not too clever, is it? No, it's not. It could uh, could be a bit slippy up there. You not brought any gear, have you? Just a rope. Take the waterproof off, it be too warm walking up yeah. there. The friend, also from Manchester, and together they became acknowledged by the world as the greatest climbing partnership in history. His friend's name was Joe Brown. Don, I think, was the best uh, person to climb with. In, you know, the situations we used to climb, you know, all levels in the Alps and in Britain. And, you know, he was really great to climb with but uh, sometimes you know we didn't get on too well in a normal sort of social situation and uh, you know as, as Don didn't get on too well with any of my girlfriends that, that I had and eventually I think that is what split us up. That rift was to be healed on a murky morning in the Lanberis Pass in Snowdonia, Willens and Brown, now with 106 years between them, 